Who is this Allah that we keep hearing them talking about? Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he is the one that has no beginning. And he has no end. He is the one who we do not give the attributes of deficiency or defects or shortcomings or faults. He is the one who he says about himself. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm. Sleep, fatigue, tiredness, weariness, none of these attributes overtake him. He is the one who says that the dominion of the heavens and the earth are in his hands. He is the one that says about himself, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He neither has a child nor was he born. This is Allah. This is the one, the word, the name that we've been hearing for years in this city. This is the one who gave you the food that you're sitting in front of us eating right now. And how could it be that that one who did all of this and more be limited, be limited in his attributes and his characteristics? How could it be? So in Islam, we find the true meaning and the understanding of the creator of the heavens and earth. The Muslims are the ones who believe in him, giving him his rights of perfection. And Islam says that he is the one that deserves to be worshipped. And it is a logical conclusion. For if he is the creator of the heavens and the earth, if he is the creator of the heavens and the earth, then it's a logical conclusion that he owns everything by himself. And if he is the owner of everything because he created it, that means that he is the administrator of all the affairs of all his creatures. Whether they are Pentecostal Christians attending Wells Cathedral Church of God in Christ or Ebenezer Baptist Church, no matter who they may be, Hindu or Buddhist or Jew, he is their creator and he is their maker and he deserves to be worshipped by himself. Because he created everything by himself. And he owns everything by himself. So it is a logical conclusion that he is to be worshipped by himself, ascribing no partners to him. It is unimaginable for myself, using as an example, growing up in Baxter Terrace projects, that the person who lived next door to me in the 60s, where I grew up there, the woman who lived next door to me, that I would give her, who's not a relative, not my mother or my father, give her all the respect after my mother and my father reared me and cherished me and sustained me and provided for me and gave me clothes and gave me food. It would be unbefitting for me to give the woman next door to me or the man upstairs from me all the respect and the love and devotion who have done nothing for me. Likewise, it is unbefitting for the human being to make someone or something a sharer in that respect and devotion and more importantly in that worship. So in Islam, we say that there's only one who deserves to be worshipped. There's only one who deserves to be prayed to directly. There's no need to put a bottle in front of me between myself and my Lord. There's no need to put a tree in front of myself and my Lord to call on that bottle or to call on that tree to get to my Lord or to call on a statue. Likewise, there's no need for me as a human being who wants to give his Lord his rights to call on him, the one who hears everything and the one who answers all supplications and prayers, 
There's no need for me to place an intermediary or an intercessor between me and my Lord. I should be able, figuratively speaking, to make a direct call to my Lord. Call on him one on one. This is what Islam teaches. That we worship him and we call on him and we pray and we fast and we give charity and all acts of devotion and worship directly to him and him alone. This is one of the most unique factors and characteristics of the religion of Islam. That we, the Muslims, worship Allah by himself. No other religion can claim this. No other religion no other philosophy, no other theological concept can claim this. We are the only ones, without boasting, that calls on the Lord of the world directly, not through anyone or anything that is created. A personal, a truly person, personal relationship between the one who is created and the one who is cre the creator. Allah. And once again, since we are used to hearing that word, the creator of the heavens and earth, Allah, in this city, we will continue to use the word Allah, and in your minds, you will understand that we mean the supreme being. So Islam is that religion that calls the human being to give their Lord his rights and to not bring him down to a lowly state a lowly humanistic position, a lowly anthropomorphic station, a station that an animal or a human being holds, which is to say that he has offspring, is to say that the Lord of the worlds, the one who's far above any faults or defects, would take a son or take a daughter or have a mother or have a son. Because if you thought about it, it's unimaginable that the one who created the heavens and the earth would be born or come through the womb of a woman. It's unimaginable that the same one who created everything that you can see and everything that you cannot see, anything that you could imagine, and things that you cannot imagine, that the Lord of the worlds, the creator of the heavens and the earth, would come through the womb of a woman. This is unimaginable. And this is slander. How many people in the United States are sued every week for slander? How many? How many times do you go to ShopRite and you buy a magazine and you read in that magazine that such and such actor or entertainer sued someone for slander. Slander meaning saying something about that entertainer that's not true. This is slander. You say that such and such actor is gay. And that actor claims that he's a heterosexual. So he takes you to court. Why does he take you court? Because you are saying without proof, without justification, you are ascribing to that entertainer an attribute that is not deserving of that entertainer. How much more saying something about the Lord of the worlds that you don't have a right to say? How much more attributing a quality or a characteristic to the Lord of the universe that he doesn't deserve. Saying that he has a beginning, that he was born, or that he died, or that he was crucified. Subhana, as we say in the Arabic language, he is far above any of these lowly qualities. So it is Islam that clarifies who is the creator of the heavens and the earth. It is Islam that makes the differentiation, that distinguishes the creator from the creation. It's unimaginable that the creator would have a beginning and have an end. 
It's unimaginable that the creator can be divine and human at the same time. Allah. Islam is the religion that teaches us that this Lord, Allah, is the one who we will all stand in front of. 